Today I want to talk about not fearing lawn functions. And in order to talk about that, we have to define what a function is, what, what does it mean to be lawn or short. And so uh, I'm going to simplify this and say that there are two major philosophies for putting functions together. And one is with short functions. And what do we mean by short functions? Something like this. It's the idea that as you're writing a function, if it gets longer than so many lines, x number of lines, then you should break it up into two smaller functions. And so you end up having things like this, um, where you a function probably calls other functions, right? And so you could you could have a function like this, such as short func, which does nothing but call other functions in order to keep short func shorter. And of course, there may be loops or conditional statements in here, but this is an illustration of the point. So what's the other way? The other way of organizing functions is what I like to call natural functions. And natural functions can look something like this, where it has the exact same code as we did in the previous example, except that all the code for A is inside our natural function. All the code for B is inside, and C is inside. Now, some people take umbrage at this because they say, well, if you have this huge long function, uh, it becomes more difficult to read, it's more difficult to test. But today, I want to talk about why this way is actually the best way of putting together functions. In order to do that, we have to talk about what a function actually is. So back in the old days, when we had assembly language, uh, people realized that, or they didn't have such things as if statements and loops and so forth. What you did is you did all of those, you created all of those constructs with jump instructions. And at some point, somebody realized, hey, there are places in this application that duplicate code. And what we can do is we can factor out that duplicated code, put it into a single block, and then in our main program or elsewhere in our program, we can call that block of instructions. So that way we're not duplicating that code multiple times. And that is the birth of functions. And that is the ultimate purpose of functions is to factor out duplicate code. And when we start thinking about functions this way, uh, a lot of things fall into place. So let's take a look. It's just like by factoring, I mean this exact same meaning as when we factor out functions in algebra. So you can see in this equation, we can factor out an x, right? And so that's the equivalent of factoring out a block of code and putting it somewhere else that you can refer to it over and over again. So what are the consequences of doing this? Well, the first is that functions now have a natural length. They can grow, they can be, there can be small functions, there can be medium and large functions, and this allows the code, uh, our code to have kind of a natural breathing and rhythm to it. The second thing is it makes it easier to navigate the code. If you have code that looks like this, what does A actually look like? If I'm trying to debug or read through the code to try to understand it, I have to search for A. Now, you may have tools. You may have an IDE where you can right-click on A or have a shortcut that takes you to A, but that still means you have to jump around. You either have to scroll through the file, you have to jump to some other file, and you have to jump back. And that's just like uh, when you're a kid and reading those books where it's choose your own adventure, and you have to keep flipping back and forth through the book in order to read the story. It makes it more difficult to read the story, and in, the, and in code, it makes it more difficult to know what's going on with the code. It's, it actually makes it far easier to create uh, bugs in the code and to not understand the code because you have to flip back and forth between things. 
Whereas in natural functions, you read a function as if it's a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and end. And you can read everything that, ha that happens in that function in the function itself. The third thing is that it actually provides more information. It actually gives your program more meaning. You can imagine if you break functions up into little tiny pieces. So you've got, instead of having a natural length function, you break it up into many, many pieces. Well, if you see a function call, it tells you nothing. But if you only break up code by factoring out duplicate code, you will see that if there's a function call in your program, you know that that is reusable code. It's reused in your program. It's either part of a library or it's used multiple times in your application. And that tells you something, right? And I think in the future, we're going to have more, more uh, visualization of code. So we're going to be able to see all of our code, how it connects to each other in maybe a graph representation. And if your code, if you write code with natural functions, with natural length, each function will be a node and it will create a graph to other nodes. And instead of having all these spurious nodes, you will have nodes that actually mean something and connect together and create an actual graph that's understandable. And so it makes it way easier to go through the code, to read through the code, and to figure out when things are wrong, and also to update things. So let's say that you end up creating a new future, uh, a new um, feature in the future. If you have code this way, and say that this little block of code B here, say that ends up having to be duplicated somewhere else in the application. Well, you can actually pull this out and then make B a function call because now that is duplicated code that is factored out. Now there's lots of other things that you could say about this, but I just wanted to highlight these three things. And I would encourage you to try this out because uh, I've heard other um, very skilled uh, application developers or software engineers talk about how law and functions are good, and I ignored them for years. I said, you know, well, I had all this, all these stories in my head about how short functions are great. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I thought about things and said, you know what, I should probably actually try it out. And once I did, I found that code was easier to read. In some cases, the code was more compact. Instead of breaking things out, you learn actually how to coalesce things. And uh, oftentimes, you learn how things, uh, how breaking things up into multiple pieces can actually create overhead and can actually create um, boilerplate code. And so, if that, if you remove that boilerplate, um, your code actually gets shorter. And so, I would encourage you to try try this out uh, the same way that I did. It may work for you, it may not, but I think having these natural length functions where some are short and some are longer uh, works out way better than if you try to arbitrarily break things up into um, uniform sizes. And so in summary, functions should be as long as they need to be. And how do you figure out how long a function should be? Well, you factor out duplicated code. So anything that you do twice or more, um, you factor out into functions. Now, of course, there are always exceptions to the rule. So I'm not going to say that this is a hard rule, but it is a general rule that works very well if you follow it. And in the very tiny outlier cases where you have to break that rule, um, that's fine. But as a general rule, it works pretty well. And that's all I wanted to say for today.